Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Uh, I got a cool one today again, guys. You know, um, uh, as Christmas is approaching, and I think we all know now that it's uh, uh, around the corner, um, we're all looking for some kind of unique gift. You know, some kind of, uh, something that has a little special thing in it, but is also unique and maybe something you made yourself. So uh, in that spirit, let me show you what I got in mind today. Hang tight. So what we're going to do, um, you know, everybody has seen those little game systems that you can buy, uh, the Raspberry based gaming systems, um, or even a PC where you've actually got a, an external controller pad that you would plug directly into the device to give you the full joystick and all the button controls on it, right? And uh, I got me to thinking, that's cool and all, but what if we could consolidate the entire game system into that pad and still maintain the ability to connect external devices to it? Wait, you say that already exists. You're right, but there's a way to do it at about a tenth of the cost. So let me show you what we got in mind. So I picked up one of these little uh, kits to build your own joystick. And I'm going to try to get Stumpy all focused in on this area here so we can take a look at what we got. I'm going to go ahead and crack this open here. Like I said, I like to do all this live with you guys so you can see what I do and exactly how to do it. I don't want any surprises if you try to do this project on your own. So uh, this was actually pretty inexpensive off of Amazon. I think it was, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks, give or take. Let's see. And I will try to find the link for it. I picked this up quite a while ago. You can tell by the dust on it. It's been here for a while waiting for this project to get done. Of course, that seems to be the, the story of my life. I have a whole ton of projects ready to go and just no time to do them. So hopefully I'll get some time, a little, little time away from work. All right, so here you go. Now this is the actual system itself. And inside here we've got some, looks like some rubber feet and some screws. Here is the actual base. And here is the top. Now this has got an acrylic layer on top of it. Um, we don't want to peel this off quite yet. We want to uh, work with it as much as we can without taking that off so we don't scuff it. And you can see right there that's why. You know, you peel that stuff off and it can get scuffed a little bit. So, all right. In order to do this project, we know there's a few items we are definitely going to need. So... Uh, in the bag, it comes with, let's see here, this looks like the buttons, and what do we got here? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, or no, eight. Let's see, eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay, we've got all the buttons in there. And this appears to be the joystick mechanism. Yes, it is. And that's micro switches, guys. That's actually a good joystick. That should work really well. All right, now, this is the important part. So, the way these work, once you hook up, ah, look here, a very familiar board, guys. This is that controller board that we used on the Arcade 1-Up a couple of videos ago. If you haven't seen that one, take a look down here in the description. I'll put a link to it. It's only a couple of videos back. Um, this is what's going to give us the ability to connect this directly to the Raspberry. So, ordinarily what you would do is you would put all this together, plug this cable into this on the outside here, and then plug this into your external device, so into your a PC or into your Raspberry or whatever to use it as a controller. Um, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to make this a lot cooler than that. So let's go ahead and I want to get all this unboxed here. Now this is the cabling that came with it. We will probably go ahead and use this because um, it's got the slide-ons and I do like that quite a bit. So, all right. Yes, indeed. All right. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed and we'll take the next step. Hang tight. So, as you can see, guys, um, we've got everything all unpacked here. Uh, it's, this is a very straightforward kit. I Actually, in looking at this, um, it'd be a very simple build for pretty much anybody to do. Um, even the modification, I don't think, is going to be all that complicated, with the exception of the fact that we are going to have to do some slight modifications to this box, and I'll show you why here in a second. Now, in order to complete the conversion that we want to do, we're going to need a couple more things, though. Obviously, we're going to need a Raspberry. And once again, we're going to go with a B3 Plus on this one. And I have already pre-configured a card for this one. I wanted to be ready to go by the time we were up and running here. So there we go. Put that there. We're going to need... And now this is where it gets interesting because we want to be able to run an external source to this. And we also want to be able to have access to the internal USB, right? So in order to do that, we're going to have to have a couple of different cables.
the first we're going to have to have, this allows us, and I'm going to try to show Stumpy here. This allows us to connect the HDMI from the internal source on the Raspberry to an external port on the outside of the box. That way we can plug the TV directly into this box. We're going to definitely have to have that, all right? The next thing we're going to have to have, since we're going to want to be able to access the USB ports in the exact same way, is we're going to have to have a couple of these USB cables that are the same way. So it's male going into the Raspberry, and it's going to be female on the outside of the box. Now, I've elected to go ahead and install two of these, all right? Um, that way we can access two extra controllers. If we wanted to, in theory, we could even put one wireless transmitter on the inside of this case so that you had two controllers that came with it and the ability to add on two more. Uh, or to plug in a keyboard and a mouse or whatever other devices you wanted to. So we're going to go ahead and add two of those. All right. And the next thing we're going to need is obviously we have to have a way to power the Raspberry. Okay. So the Raspberry is going to be inside here. So we're going to have to have a plug that will convert that micro USB on the Raspberry to an external micro USB, which will be on the outside of this. So we're going to have four external plugs that we're going to have to gain access to from this unit. So those, when I was saying we had to modify the box a little bit, that's what I'm talking about. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so, and I think in the bag here, you've got a couple of these little rubber feet, which we may or may not use. It just depends. So we'll take a look. All right, so let me get the area cleaned up here a little bit, and we'll go ahead and get started with assembly on the uh, system itself. Hang tight. All right, guys, so in thinking about this project and the way I wanted to handle it, um, Given the fact that I don't know how low any of these devices are once we install it in this box, uh, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the top panel of this completely. Uh, that way we'll be able to see how much room we have to work on the underside of this in the box and where we're going to want to mount the Raspberry so we have optimal access to all of our ports. So let's go ahead and let's get started on that. Now, uh, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit, guys, because I know that watching this might be a little uh, excruciating. So here we go. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you something that I did. Um, I went ahead and I peeled the uh, the paper off the top of this, and I'll show you why. Number one, I think I'm going to leave the black on. It, it just adds a little bit extra support to this. And when I open this up, I noticed that, and I hope Stumpy's picking this up, it has a hairline crack right here between these two buttons. You see that? Um, now, it doesn't appear to be affecting the rigidity of this, um, and I'm going to apply some epoxy to the back of this in order to keep it solid. Um, but in the interest of keeping the project going, as long as it's solid, I'm planning on skinning this anyway sometime in the future. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that means, it means putting on an overlay of some sort. And usually it's a, a very thick plastic overlay, um, so this wouldn't even be a factor. But for right now, I wanted to show you guys that. That's the reason I peeled this layer off so you could see that. And you see that little crack right there. That's what we're talking about. But like I said, it doesn't affect it. This thing is very, very solid. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the build. So here we go. So one thing I've noticed, guys, uh, with this kit, the one thing that you have a marked lack of is instructions. Um, and I've gone to the manufacturer's website. The instructions they gave were rudimentary at, at best. Um, and it came down to this uh, uh, USB encoder board. Now, we've talked about this one before on the, uh, um, of the other episodes because this is the same one that we used on the Arcade 1-Up. Um, but not quite. It's close, but not exactly. Uh, and the reasoning is because the labeling on the back of this is very, very unclear as to where everything goes. Um, the truth is, it shouldn't matter. Um, as long as, because when you, when you first plug this in and, and configure it with a Raspberry, um, it's going to have you set up the controls. So you can set up the controls any way that you want to. So what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to try to do this as best I can with, with, with the notes that are on this, and then uh, we'll just plug it in and test it. Now, one thing I wanted to mention, and looking inside the inside of this box, as you can see, there's nowhere to mount this. So this is, my guess is, just to sit it in place and let it go. And that's kind of another slap shot thing, but we're gonna, we're gonna work around that and see what we can do here. Uh, the good news is, Based on what I was seeing is we've got a lot of room under here and a lot of places that we can mount both the Raspberry and this little box uh, so we can get some optimal placement on it. So hang tight one sec. Let me get these mounted and I'll show you what we got. Hold on. All right, guys. So um, as you can see, and I'm going to try to get Stumpy to focus in there. I've got the standoffs underneath the Raspberry and that sucker's not going anywhere. 
Um, ironically, the standoffs were almost the exact same size as the mounting holes for the Raspberry, so they actually threaded into the fiberglass. Uh, I'm not even going to need washers on that thing. It's solid as a rock. So, good choice. Like I said, always experiment because you never know what you're going to find, what's going to work for you. So, all right. On to the next step, shall we? All right. Crank that one down there. Perfect. Okay. So, we've got the Raspberry mounted now. And as you can see, what I did is, and I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to try to get Stumpy to focus. There's a ledge right here, a little lip. And the reason I raised this up was not only for airflow, but also to allow us to plug into these ports if we need. And all this room over here is going to be for cable management, which will become necessary. This is actually the front. So we'll be cutting in our ports right here in the front. And as you can see, well, you may not be able to. They have got these little squares, which looks like it was from the injection molding, which is going to work out just perfect for what we're doing. Um, in fact, that's where we're going to aim our ports to take them out. So it's going to work out really well. Um, all right, so, and something else I noticed. Remember we had discussed the fact that they included two extra buttons? Well, once again, I'll see if Stumpy can pick this up. There are two circles. There's one here, and there's one here. And it's flat, but it looks like in the injection molding process, they may have intended to put two more buttons into this. I don't know why. You're certainly not going to hold it like this and play, but um, that's what it kind of looks like either way. We're just going to call them spares for now. So, all right. Um, given how cool this worked, I may go ahead and mount the controller for... In fact, I'm going to. Hang tight one sec, guys. I'm going to mount this one just like we did the Raspberry. Be right back with you. All right, guys. So, as you can see, we've got them now drilled in for this side. All nice and screwed down. And now this actually fits... Uh, these holes appear to be a little bit larger than the Raspberry. So as you can see, they actually slide right down on there. So uh, we shouldn't, we, I'm probably going to go ahead and put a, uh, a nut on these just to hold that down. Although as you can see, it's definitely not going to just go anywhere. It's rock solid. But I'm going to put a couple nuts on the corners here just to be sure. So hang tight. Be right back. All right, guys. So back about 15, 20 minutes later here. And I want to show you where we're at. So, as you can see, I'm going to see if I can get Stumpy all nice and focused in on this. All right. So, we've got our control panel. Actually, let me zoom him up just a bit here. There we go. Okay. So, we've got our, our controller board for the uh, USB encoder. We've got our Raspberry. And then what we did is, and I'll show you this on the back side too, we've got a USB here, a USB here, we've got our HDMI here, and we've got our power here. Now, one thing I did have to do, and I want to mention this for the video, and I'm hoping you can see this. Do you see how I raised up the Raspberry? Well, I had to put double size standees in here, and for those of you who don't know, you can actually buy these. They're actually just a lot larger than the standard ones. Um, and what it did is it raised it up so that the HDMI cable would go in here and clear these plugs. So that was one thing that I uh, uh, had not thought of when I put this in originally. So, all right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wire up the controllers. So uh, as, you, as I wire up these controllers, we're going to put these into place here. And I'm just going to run these external wires out and we'll plug them into the buttons. And then we'll fire it all up and we'll test it to see if it's going to work with this current configuration. And as you can see on the back here, and I'll show you what Stumpy's got. Got our USB here, our USB here, our HDMI, and our power right here. Okay? So let me go ahead and get this all wired up. We'll be right back with you. Hang tight. Okay, guys. So... Here's a little look at the uh, the wiring for the buttons. And as you can see, this is a lot more basic than the arcade one-up that we did. Um, a common and a ground for each one of the plugs, for each one of the directionals on the joystick. And each one of the uh, buttons just has a common and a ground. So really basic stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get these plugged into the control board over here. Now, one thing I had to make absolutely certain of is that we were going to be able to clear um, everything inside here. And as you can see, nothing is in the way. This is where the joystick actually sits. So it'll sit just like that when we're all done. So, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and get this in, and then we'll be right back with you. Hang tight. Okay, guys, so um, <clears throat> as I was saying, we had to go through a couple of different things um, to get the, uh, uh, the joystick calibrated. And one thing I want to mention specifically on this particular kit, and I don't know if Stumpy is going to pick this up real well, but as you can see, we've got it all wired up in here right now. Um, as you can see, this is a gated joystick, okay? And what a gated joystick means is that um, you've got four buttons on each side. If it's a four-way button, and that was determined by this small ring, and I'm going to show Stumpy. If that ring is installed, that means your joystick can only go up, down, left, or right. 
If you remove this ring, then it becomes an eight-way joystick. That way you can do diagonal both directions, diagonal both directions, and all four directions. Um, that is very, very important in games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, anything where you actually had have an eight-way motion. Um, otherwise, if you'd left the four-way button on there, and you would have discovered this after everything was buttoned up, of course, um, what would happen is you'd be playing Mortal Kombat, you could not jump diagonally left or right. All you could do is jump straight up in the air or duck. Um, so obviously that was something that had to be eliminated. Um, would have come in handy if I'd known about that, but once again, we had no instructions in this kit, so I'm kind of winging it. All right, so now that we've got it wired up, I'm going to go ahead and give Stumpy a little tour of what we've got in here so you can see what it looks like. All right, so we can aim her down here. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the Raspberry. We've got three USBs connected up. Two of them are going to these rear ports, and one of them is actually going to the control board itself for the um, uh, joystick and the buttons up on top. As you can see, we've got the joystick. Now, I know it looks like there's no rhyme or reason. Let me see if I can get him positioned in a stable position here. What I did is, and I was right about this, it doesn't matter where you plug these in over here, um, primarily because when you calibrate the joystick inside of uh, RetroPie or whatever you're going to use, um, it's going to ask you what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right, and then it's going to record it. So it doesn't really matter. But there, even though it looks like there's no rhyme or reason, they are actually in order. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then of course the two buttons up on top are right here. So I try to keep it in order as well as I could. Um, now looking at the back of the joystick here, you can see how there's a hole back here. That's where that gate was, and I can show you that gate. It sits right in there like that to create a four-way. So obviously we don't want a four-way. That doesn't do us any good. All right, so as you can see, and I'll give him one more little pan over here. Everything is now installed and buttoned in tightly. Now I will tell you that I'm going to take these uh, tabs and I'm going to bend them flush on all sides just for clearance in here. We haven't had a problem, but I don't want to run into any issues. Um, so let me do that real quick. I'll be right back with you. Hang tight. Oh, before I button it, there is one more thing I want to let you know about. Um, these little rubber feet, if you do decide to use them, this is the point you're going to want to install them because once you put the top on, you can't reinstall these, and I'll show you why. In the kit, it comes with, and I will try to turn this so that you guys can see it clearly. This is the little rubber foot that it comes with, and as you can see, there's a little hole in that little rubber foot right there. See the hole? All right. So you put the rubber foot up through here, then it comes with these little plastic hooks, and the idea is you run the hook up through the rubber hole to hold this in place like that. It's kind of like a, a security lock. See how that works? And hopefully Stumpy is catching that, but you see how that works right there? So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat it. We'll put one down here. Fortunately, nothing that we wired up is in the way of where these hooks would have gone. Um, I had actually thought about that when I saw it. At the beginning, I had kind of vacillated back and forth whether to even install these little things because this is going to be sitting pretty solid and I having to pull those up each time might be a pain. But you know what? It came with the kit. Let's make it look exactly like it would had you bought it. So hang tight. I'm going to get all of them installed. Be right back with you. Okay, guys. So uh, two things. You know, uh, one thing about my channel, and I know that a lot of you know this, um, I try to do everything uh, as live as I can. I want people to see things exactly the way I see it um, so that people can see that, that projects don't always go as expected. Um, two things that I noticed about this. Number one, <laughs> My anti-static mat is actually rubber. You guys have seen me work on this a thousand times. These feet stick to my anti-static mat like glue. <laughs> that was an, an interesting thing to figure out right off the bat. So look at that. I mean, I could literally, that is tight. Um, the other thing is, let me see if I can get it off the table here and I'll show you. All right. Um, the little hooks that you see in here actually act as, see that? As lockdown. See these little nubs? So each one's got one to lock them in place, which is actually pretty cool. All right, so we got all the goodies together. So what do you say? We're going to button this thing up. Let's give it a dry run. What do you think? Hang tight. All right, guys. So we got our completed unit. And as you can see, there's that gap I was telling you about. And that gap is just enough to let a little bit of airflow through the machine. Let the air out of the raspberry, but not enough to where if you're up here, you're not even going to notice it. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pull out the old, you know what, I think I'm going to do this old school. So instead of using the uh, 
uh, video capture, I'm going to aim Stumpy at the screen. I want to see this raw, just like we're seeing it, okay? So I'm going to turn my screen over here, and let's put this bad boy right up over here, and let's get it plugged in and see what she does. All right, there's our HDMI. There's our power. Now that should be all we need in theory. So right now we don't have any, I'm going to stick it down to that table. Look at that. That sucker is anchored. All right. Hang on one sec here. Let me flip Stumpy around. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Here we go. Now, this is that same image you guys have seen me work with before. Um, if anybody out there would like me to make a, a video on how to create a Raspberry image, um, I can certainly do that for you. It's actually simple. There are millions of tutorials. Um, I can't tell you where to get your ROMs, um, but I can tell you that if you go on the internet and do searches for uh, uh, ROMs, you're going to find them all over the place. So that's not a problem. You'll be able to do that. All right, so here we go. We've got our joystick. I'm going to move it over to the side here. And let's see what happens. All right. So we are into the system. Oh, and look at this. It's working right off the bat. Joystick feels really, really good. All right, tell you what, let's, uh, let's do a couple of tests here. First of all, let's check the calibration because I do want to make sure that everything is working right. So this should be B. Configure input. All right. So it is seeing it as a Dragon Rise generic. Okay. Uh, up, down, left, right. That's good. Start and select. We know those. Okay. A, B, X, Y. Now this is where it's going to get a little sketchy. Um, this can change from game to game. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up A and B as the top two on the left here. A, B, X, Y, and then shoulder, shoulder. Now, that should give us all the standard buttons for a six-button game, um, as well as keep the four buttons together. So in other words, your high kick, high punch, low kick, low punch should be in the same place. So let's check that out. Uh, for the rest of these, we're just going to hold down the button. Incidentally, for those who don't know, um, if you're configuring RetroPie, and you need to assign uh, no button to it. This is how you do it. You just hold down any one of the buttons that you've already previously assigned to something else, and it will set up as a not defined status. Now the hot key, you wanna leave that also not defined. Now you can set up a specific button for a hot key um, if you wanted to, but if you don't assign it, then start and select together will take you out of the game. That's actually a much better way to do it in my opinion. All right, we don't have a hot key button, we know that. And here we go. Beat it back. Yep, there we go. All right, so let's um, let's just jump into a game here. Uh, you know what? Let's pick a basic old arcade game to test things and make sure everything is working. All right. Let's go into Apple doo -doo -doo -doo, Arcade. You know what? I'm in the mood for some Galaga. Anybody else? Let's go down here and see if I've got it in this folder. All right. And now normally, um, you can actually use your shoulders. Look here, page up, page down. That's another real good reason I did that. Okay, let's go into Galaga. And this is the arcade version, so we're going to see it. Uh, incidentally, you guys might notice uh, every now and then on the screen, you're, I'm getting an under voltage. It's because I'm using a really cheap power supply, and that's a real problem. You can't do that, unfortunately. So, all right, so here we go. Going on into Galaga. That certainly is looking correct. Yeah, the buttons actually feel pretty good, guys. Um, the clips on them are kind of cheesy. I might go back in and put some hot glue under them or something, uh, but they do seem to feel pretty good. All right, so we're going to put in credits with this coin, with this button. And let's start the game. Let's see how we're moving and how we're firing. So A should be the bottom left here. There we go. Playing just like it should. Everything's moving really, really well. All right, so let's go with something a little more complex. So these two buttons should take us out of the game. Then they do. So we know that our start and select is working as the hotkey correctly. All right, so let's go to, let's go back. And we'll go back again. All right. And in the favorites, incidentally, you can add any of these games to your favorites as you go along. Um, I don't do that much. I probably should as much as I play them, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go in here. Let's go to... Eh, let's check out a fighting game here. Let's go over to Mortal Kombat real quick. All right. Now remember, 
One cool thing about this is, this is one joystick. We still have two external USB ports to plug in other joysticks, to plug in a keyboard, uh, to plug in a mouse, any other peripherals you want to use. Um, so this is essentially one whole contained unit that does all the gaming. So, put in a couple of coins here. All right, let's go on in here. Excuse the audio, that's because of my low voltage setting, but it should still, it might be a little slow to play too. I know how this works, but. All right, so let's try a couple of the basics here. All right, so our eight-way keyboard is working. Okay, our combo's working. Let's see if our other one's working here. Yep, our other one's working too, so let's go over here. All right, so all combos are working. Yeah, like I said, excuse the voltage problems. When it, it runs slow like this, that's what it is. All right, so there's your kick, there's your high kick, there's your low punch, there's your high punch. Yep, everything's working good. All right, so same thing. These two buttons should take us out, and they do. Fantastic. So it's working great. Um, now, in order to connect up another controller, you would simply have to either plug in a wired controller, or in this case, you guys know my little wireless ones that I use typically. Now, we should be able to do this on the fly. Let's see what happens here. Sometimes with an under voltage, when you connect a new controller, it'll actually boot you out to, ra to Raspbian, which we don't want. But let's see if it did it. All right, so it looks like it did detect it. And look at that. The controller is actually functioning with the system now. Look at that. And now we have two controllers hooked up just like that. Pretty simple, right? All right. So let me go ahead and we'll shut this thing down. And this actually, guys, I believe is going to be a Christmas present for somebody. Um, but I may end up building these and having them here in the shop. Um, there are a couple of things I'll tell you about on these here in just one second. All right, so once we're all shut down, we can pull these out. All right, guys, so a couple of important points about this project, and this is uh, stuff that I, I think that if you're going to do this yourself, you're going to definitely want to know. Um, this kit is very, very inexpensive, and there's a reason. Uh, when you use the buttons, you can feel, and the joystick, you can feel that it's, it's decent, but it's not what I would call top of the line. It certainly isn't going to be, you know, the best game joysticks and buttons out there. However, you can change those out. That's not a problem. Also, keep in mind when I received this one, it had this hairline crack in it, which is annoying, but no big deal. Um, since I'm going to skin this thing anyway, which, by the way, would be super easy on this thing. I, it's one thing about this that I do like. Um, you can pull the buttons right out, just unplug them, and then lay your skin over it, cut your holes out, slide your buttons back in, you're done. So very, very simple. Um... I do think that leaving the air holes, the gap right here, was a very good idea. Um, I don't foresee it getting super hot, but you know what? Even if it does, at least there's some airflow getting in there, and that's a big thing when you're dealing with these. Um, also, and this is more of a side thing, um, as you can see, and I'm going to try to get, once again, it sticks down on my pad. i got to slide it off here. Um, now that I've got the raspberry and all that in there, this has got some pretty good weight to it, which is another nice thing, too, because all those cables and all that, Add some some, some, yeah, some substantial weight to it. So, um, in the future, and of what I may end up doing, um, you can see here, the holes look great. It really did. It turned out fantastic. Um, and all I did with these was use a, uh, an X-Acto knife, and I heated it up to cut perfect lines so that I could cut this out. Um, in the future, I may try a Dremel. I did try it on the first cut. What I was finding is the plastic was binding up around it, so it didn't work out real well. Um, either way... We got a functioning product. It works. It looks great. And it, it's fantastic. It's going to make a great present for somebody. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, guys. Thanks again for watching. This has been a very, very educational video. Um, I've had to learn a lot as I went on this because it there was just nothing on it out there. Um, what I can tell you is that you can build this for about a third of the cost of buying it online. So just to give you an idea, do it yourself. I always say it. Don't be afraid. Jump in. Do the project. You'll be fine. Everything will work just fine. Well, thanks again for watching, guys. Um, have a great holiday, whether it's Christmas or Kwanzaa or whatever you celebrate. Have a fantastic holiday with your family. Um, I will see you again back after the first of the year. Hopefully, we'll have some new toys for the bench here. I, I've been told there may be, so we'll see what happens. And uh, you know I'll have a video up for you. So. Have a great week, great weekend, great Christmas or whatever you're doing, and a fantastic new year, and we will see you in 2020. Bye-bye.